The Unfiltered by Jade. Jade. Welcome to The Unfiltered by Jade, where we get out of the box and dive into topics that are sidelined. I look forward to entertain, educate, and inspire. Feel free to like, share, subscribe, donate, and make everybody know about this. Beats by RB Records. Shopping assistance, your style, your budget. Our services include online and local shopping for individuals and businesses, personal shopping, purchasing of company and office supplies, importing and exporting small packages across Jamaica and worldwide, and helping you find unique gifts and items for all events and occasions. Contact us at 876 919 5195 or shopping assistance 2015 at gmail.com. Shopping assistance, your style, your budget. Welcome back to the Unfiltered by Jade. Today we have with us Shannon Ray, and she is a content creator by passion and global partnership and communication strategies by trade. Mm -hmm. Hi, Shannon. Hi. How are you? I'm doing very well. Just want to thank you again for having me on. I'm very excited. Yes. Thank you so much for being <laughs> on it. I'm, I'm, I'm very excited about this topic. <laughs> All right. So we're talking about divorce, life after divorce, really. So I want you first to take us on the journey of you getting married. And sure. if there were any red flags or doubts that you had. Uh, just the short version, absolutely. <laughs> but um, of course, you know, hindsight, the benefit of hindsight, you have all of that wisdom and your vision is much more clear. But when I actually met my ex-partner, it felt like almost like something out of a movie. We, I was supposed to, I'd been on a dating app and I'd been talking with this other gentleman and we, after like about a couple of weeks, we decided, okay, I felt like he wasn't going to do anything to me. Maybe we can meet up for coffee. Um, that gentleman never showed up. And I don't know why, but my partner happened to be there. Mm. Um, and so when we, when I was there, you know, I was, you know, kind of feeling away. I'd never been stood up before. Um, but my partner was there and we were talking and he was familiar to me because he had actually been on that same dating app trying to get my attention. Um, and then we had mutual friends, but he wasn't my initial quote unquote type. I don't, I don't think that there's like a, like a look type that I have, but he was different from, for me in a lot of different ways. And so it, it felt like it might not be a good fit, but we had a great conversation that day. And then we ended up going on a date a couple of days later after that. And we were pretty much together ever since our, our courtship was, was very Fast. Um, we were together just under a year before we got engaged. And about mm -hmm. six months after that, we ended up getting married. And, um, you know, I never, I will say this, I don't think that time is the issue. I think how you feel in the time is more important than how much time is spent. Okay. And um, when I think about it and think about the fact that there were often times where I felt overwhelmed by our relationship, overwhelmed by his quick feelings, um, very quick to say, I love you, very quick to have these feelings. And I would reciprocate more out of not wanting to hurt feelings. Okay. And so I think those were some of the biggest red flags that I think about in hindsight. I wasn't I wasn't thinking he was a bad guy at all, but I wasn't so comfortable with how fast things were moving. But in my mind, I was like, oh, this is this is just because it's different. It's because it's, you know, this is what you've been wanting. You've been wanting someone who's ready for this and who's ready for you and blah, 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 blah. So I would kind of talk myself into it on a pretty regular basis. And you shouldn't have to do that. There should be some, there should be some um, confirmation within you 
before you're you're kind of jumping from step to step with someone. And, and he was really excited to continue to move past each, you know, kind of milestone rather quickly. And looking back on that, those were definitely some big red flags. There's a lot of things I think about. <laughs> um, that's definitely one, the speed and, and not like, again, I think that there are some people like my parents, they were together for I think six months and then they got married, but they just celebrated 42 years of marriage. Wow. I think it's a difference. Um, I think that there's a, a friendship, a comfort, something that you should know where this feels right. And I felt overwhelmed. I never felt like, oh my gosh, this could be the, the worst thing to ever happen to me. But I definitely felt this is really overwhelming. I don't know about this. Yeah. I mean, it mm. means that you probably weren't comfortable, too comfortable yeah. with it. Right, 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 right. Um, within the relationship, we had actually a pretty, pretty nice courtship. We were, we were definitely good friends. I was, uh, before COVID traveled a lot, a lot in, a uh, lot within, um, the U S a lot out of the U S occasionally, just because of the, the nature of my work. I work on large scale partnerships that lead to really big community initiatives. Right. Um, and so I would travel a lot. And so our time together was truncated because if you're gone three or four times out of the week on top of that you were me i was in grad school there was a lot of missed opportunities to to see things so again mm. there are just things that i look back on i'm like oh that was the perfect storm for us um not really really getting to know each other the way that we should have or me thinking that the representative was the totality of who i was getting and it it just wasn't true um, and so I think that was another a big issue was uh, we weren't around each other a lot during that courtship because I had so much going on. I was very busy. And um, and so it was easy to kind of brush things under the rug that I would see or not think through as deeply as I would normally because we don't have that much time together. Some of the things that I would hear. Um, like I said, he wasn't some bad guy, but he was really big on testing my boundaries, big or small. Mm. And that was, and that was one that ended up being a forever red flag in a, in the largest issue in our relationship. Okay. Yeah. That's something I can see where, where those things can cause problem. Yeah. So being married mm -hmm. or the, the journey of the marriage, how was that? So how, how did that come about? Us getting married um, was 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 pretty standard. I did think that we wouldn't get again. I thought we were going to get engaged a little bit later than than when he actually proposed. Okay, we talked about a time frame. Um, he did it a few months earlier than that. Um, and you know, it was it was beautiful. It was nice. My friends had planned it. it was a great engagement. We were scheduled to get married April third of twenty twenty. Okay. We all know that in COVID. March of 2020, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. COVID oh, yes. should be <laughs> for everybody. So what we ended up doing, and again, we didn't, um, we like didn't live together and all of that stuff like right. that. Um, what we ended up doing, he did move in like shortly before we got married, but again, we it was I was gone most of the time. Matter of fact, the week that the our city in particular shut down, I was in New York flying back for uh for the weekend only to leave on that monday to go down to florida mm. so that's the kind of you know that's just how i, right. how I was right. living and and so we we didn't have a lot of time so i remember when we when i was flying back in from new york i remember texting him in the airport i think we're gonna have to push back the wedding we were thinking it was gonna be a couple of weeks or maybe a couple of months so we pushed it back a few months but he was really adamant that we had to get married right now. We had to get married. Um, we are both very spiritual people. Christianity mm -hmm. is very important to me. And so he was like, you already don't feel comfortable with me with being there and not being married. So let's, let's just go ahead and do it. And, you know, we didn't have these big blaring uh, sirens going off in our relationship. There were some things that I wasn't comfortable with, some red flags, some things that made me think that, oh, we're gonna have to really work at this. But I was like, okay, let's do it. Um, I, I think that once we just are married and things can calm down, we figure out what's going on with the world, all of the rest of these kind of things that were stirring up would relax. And we got married um, in March, like right, like literally right as things shut down, the next mm -hmm. day, the whole world shut down, literally. Mm -hmm. um, so we went, we, um, we eloped to my parents' backyard and um, we got married there and 
it was um, quite a ride. <laughs> <laughs> it was quite a ride. We had, I think, Jade, I think we had like a good solid month before everything. <laughs> a good solid month a good strong month I, I've been telling my friends I think we had six weeks I don't think we had that I think we had about a month and the world it was such it was such a switch I don't know how else to describe it like as different as turning a light on and off like mm -hmm. it was so different once day and night mm -hmm. yeah yeah it was so different and then I was thinking, you know what? We've got so much going on. We've got COVID because he actually traveled a bit, like not not nearly at, as extensively as I did, but he traveled a bit, like from city to city, because of um, the work that he did as a as an engineer. So we, um, well, like a like a maintenance engineer, he would take care of like facilities work, mm -hmm. um, and so we would we would both be traveling to different sites and stuff like that. And so we were in the house together. Mm -hmm. 24 7 and i met it with excitement i was like wow you know we never got this type of time together this is gonna be great but i really started seeing some things really early on some things as simple as not agreeing about vaccinations and that led to um not agreeing about politics I'm like, oh, what? Boy. when did that happen you <laughs> we literally talked about politics like, you know, like a month ago, we were on uh -huh. the same track. We were on the same thing. Nope, total light switch. Um, and he, he, he attributed to things that he was reading and how he was growing. And so, you know, you try to roll with that because you know that a person has a chance to grow. But I was like, dang, like a month in though? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I did not know it would be quite so soon. And then one day um, we were we were about to watch a movie we got kicked out of Netflix. It was my Netflix account. I was like, well, hand me your computer. Let me log back in really quick so we can get us in there. I'm going to have to reset the password because I never remember passwords. And he forgot to close out of his email. Oh, dear. Um, and there it was. <laughs> oh, dear. And that was the end of our honeymoon. <laughs> oh, my God. You know, it's just the simplest, uh, the simplest moment of... Yeah, like let's watch this movie. Let's let's just have this moment because it wasn't like we were fighting or anything, but we were definitely like, well, who are you? <laughs> who are you? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Those moments, and I just you know I was like, you know what, this is fine. We're 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 newly married, and we are really living together now. We're I'm not traveling and going somewhere all the time, so sure, there's going to be some adjustment times. I was ready for this. I was ready for you know the long haul like ebbs and flows. I understood it in concept. And so I was ready to commit to that. But I definitely didn't expect to see such a difference so soon. It, it makes more other than is that why he probably rushed everything? Oh, sure. Because, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. why rush everything? And then right as he got married, everything changed. It seemed as if there was an agenda behind that. I, I, you know, I went back and forth about that when I first left. I talked to my mom about it a lot. The beauty of having a mother who's also a counselor is that when she can put down the mom hat for a second, she gives such amazing insight. She gives great insight as a mom too, but she's protective. But when I would ask her just from like a psychological standpoint, was any of this real? Like, do you think the feelings were real? And it was, but one thing I would never forget that she said to me was, I think they were as real as he could make them be. Yeah. And did the best that he could. I don't think that he's a monster per se, nothing like that. I would never say that. I would never like, you know, try to bash or anything like that. But I do think he played a part and he was getting tired. And so getting to that marriage standpoint was a goal. So he didn't have to put on that mask so much. Yes, anymore. yes. He was probably really tired. And I don't know why he wore the mask outside of the fact that obviously the truth of who he was did not match what I needed for a partner. But I hope one day, one thing I do pray for him is that he doesn't put that mask on anymore and can actually find the right partner, do the work and find the right partner because it's going to be this for the rest of your life. If you're not being authentic about who you are, you're not going to have authentic relationships. It's going to fall. And so um, I just think the the rushing of the relationship, the rushing of meeting family, the rushing of all of it, all of the love bombing, love bombing, love bombing. I think it just really 
was something he couldn't keep up with. No, nobody can keep up with that. Yeah, no. It, it, it can be a situation also where it is that he saw that probably even on your profile, these are things that you're looking for, who you yeah. are. So he tried to match up to that for you. But it doesn't make sense because if it is that you're not going to be able to keep that up for right. a lifetime, it doesn't make right. sense start and then you're going to drop the ball. Exactly. And, and, and Jade, you, you bring up something that was something that kept me off of social media for a little while as well um, was, you know, in, in one of those last fights, he, you know, he said it. He was like, well, I studied you. Mm-hmm. You had this available. You're so open. <laughs> yeah. And I still am to an extent. You know, I still tell the truth about my story, but I definitely see the difference in people I've met thus far. Mm. Um, but he, you know, the acts, the, the information was there that the playbook was right there. And so it was really easy to, to be that when you're putting it out there. But it's almost abusive because that's how abusive partners know how to. Yeah. Dictate yeah. a relationship or act in a relationship. They study their partners and then give them what they want and then abuse them. Yeah. So that's basically what he was doing. He studied you. Then when he got to marriage, okay, now he can do whatever he wants to do. Yeah, it was it was really it was really jarring to see. It was really jarring to see because you know, you want to believe the best in people and you want to believe you know, that the intentions are good and I still don't know what they are to this day. And I don't need to know. I don't need to know anymore. I don't care. <laughs> I would be such a liar if I said that I cared at this point. Because again, we don't have anything left attached to us. Right. So there's, there's no, if it, you know, maybe if I still had a child or something like that um, with him, then I, I would want some of that resolved. But there are a lot of things that I did not get um, closure from him for because I didn't think that I could get it there. I got it from myself um, and and kind of just moved on from there. But you always wonder those intentions. And then when that person isn't real and you're reacting to things, we spent the majority of our marriage with me reacting to things uh-huh. instead uh-huh. of talking about what was actually happening to make these reactions happen. Um, and, and that's not to say that every time I reacted correctly or that I wasn't ever out of pocket or um, that like my anger, cause it would just build on. Like you find that first evidence so early into your marriage and then it continues Yes, and you don't resolve anything. You don't fix anything. Where, where are we going to go to therapy? The world's shut down. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go, <laughs> you know, like, you know, we try online help and, if both parties aren't interested, if I'm in there talking to, you know, on my phone to someone through therapy by myself, mm-hmm. you need marriage counseling, you kind of need both people yes, uh, you do. to be a part of it. But it's still, again, it's still, um, it's never something that I'm going to regret. It's just not because I needed, I needed it. And yes. I know that I needed it until, you know, after, after all of this has happened, but I really needed to see myself truly so that I could choose better yes um and also deal with some trauma that happened before this trauma so that I would choose better yes yes and that's an important part important very important when is it that you knew it was time to leave you know I don't know that there was one particular day there was I live I think from the moment that like that month in that month six weeks whatever I want to say to make it sweeter but it was, it was probably <laughs> month. <laughs> from that moment on I lived with anxiety okay. there was something that was telling me like if he if he's been doing this what reason would he have to stop now that you are married to him uh-huh. he knows how important marriage is to you um he has weird relationships around accountability. Um, He would seem genuinely sorry, but I also never believed he would stop Mm. because he wasn't sorry enough. If that makes sense, you know, there wasn't, you know what I mean? Like it didn't seem sad enough. And also there were parts of it and there were layers to it where he didn't think it was that bad either. Mm. Like, oh, it could be worse or I could be doing that. No, <laughs> like this is bad and that is bad, you know? And it, it and so it was that back and forth. And again, I know that we came from two different backgrounds, but there was 
it was a very clear right and wrong. And so if I was wrong about something and I had done something wrong, I would feel so badly about it. And we would stay on that for like months, mm. but we still couldn't get to the fact that this is predicated by something. There's, there's a reason why this happened. So I can't say that there is one definitive moment that like, I was like, oh no, this isn't going to work. But there was a definitive moment that I was like, I am not doing this anymore. Um, I mentioned that I had started therapy by myself Mm -hmm. um, and I actually had started a couple of times. So when that first happened, like really early in, I was so concerned, like it shook my world. I reached out to a therapist, like through the, um, through the app, I forgot what it's called, BetterHelp, through the BetterHelp app. And I was like, maybe I'll try this because I can't go into an office right now. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's the same with therapists, like with partners, you got to find the right one. So the first couple were not a match for me because one was like pushing me to leave. And I'm like, wait a minute. Like, no, they're not supposed to do that before that. You know, like that. I don't don't think that that's the way we should go about it. And I mean, I don't think that she was wrong, but her approach was wrong. And I needed needed time. I was nowhere near ready to give up on it. So um, my I, my initial reaction, gut reaction was, how do we fix it? Not let's throw it away. Uh-huh. Um, and so, you know, some months go by and I ended up starting therapy a few months after that, because again, you know, things continue. Um, <laughs> and um, once I started in therapy, she asked me a question and it, and it was such a simple question, but I thought about it every day, all day ev- after that. And when the next incident happened, that was like, this is it. I'm going to go. So she asked me, do you like who you've become in this marriage? Uh. Because I was reaching out to her because I was like, can you help me handle anger? Can you help me with forgiveness? Because I was struggling to, I was, and I knew that I needed to forgive him in order to continue on with the marriage. Also needed to forgive my reactions because just because someone does you wrong, it doesn't give you license, yes. just, you know, mm-hmm, do whatever mm-hmm. you want to do too. So I was mad about how I was talking to him and I was needing to forgive myself for those things. I forgive myself for my, like, just, you know, the anger. And I wasn't used to having anger. I didn't know where to put it. And it's not to say, I'm, you know, nothing's ever made me mad, but I'd been in relationships where it never got to this. I'd even been cheated on and it never got to this. So I didn't understand how to handle it because this was supposed to be my forever. So how do I, how do I handle this anger? How do I work through these things? So I went to her trying to work on myself. And as we were doing this, she was just like, you know, I'm taking you through these workbooks. We're doing all of these exercises. I do think that you're handling things better. I would give her reports on how I handled the latest fight. You know, I was so proud. Mm -hmm. Um, And then she would say, did you have to work on this before? Was there, is there, is there any other trigger? I've had other traumas. I've actually had other hard things. Never brought this out of me, but there was something about the combination of us together that really made me dislike who and how I was. I was anxious. I'd never dealt with anxiety before. I did not sleep well. I was gaining weight. Um, I've always been a really fit person. Um, I didn't, I didn't like the way I was talking to him. I didn't like how irritated I was all the time. I also didn't like that I was deeply sad, like yeah. deeply, deeply sad all the time. And I didn't know what to do with those emotions. And so she asked me if I liked who I was in this marriage, how, how, who I'd become in this marriage. And it was just such a strong no. It was like a no from some other place. And as I was kind of going through the, the motions, I think it was about a month after that, I found yet another, I mean, a blare, like there was no doubt, like they they were having a relationship, a full blown relationship. And I was like, you know what? That's, that's enough. (laughs) This is enough. This is, this is enough. You know, I mean, you got a girlfriend. (laughs) (laughs) I I cannot do that. I can't Uh -uh. do this anymore, you know, regardless of the stuff that I need to work on. And I never, I didn't stop the therapy. I can't, I continued to work on those things because there was a, those are good tools. And now I was going to need her to help me, to help me leave. Um, But that moment of, do you like who you've become resonated so deeply that I started to look at everything and really look at myself. And when I saw that last thing, I didn't, I wasn't even mad about it. I was like, oh, okay, well, all right, that's enough. Uh Yeah. Man, 
So, okay, so that's enough. So the, sep the separation process now. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about like the support system that you had. You questioning yourself, the feeling of embarrassment, these things yeah. that people normally go through. Mm -hmm. How did those work for you? You know, it's interesting. I didn't tell anybody anything about what was happening within our relationship. It was me in a journal. And then even with the therapist, it took me a while to be completely honest about some of the stuff that was happening. And so, you know, we were also in COVID. I was talking to my friends, but it became less and less or more and more surface. It wasn't the deep, open person I'm usually am. Like I'm usually like an open book with, with folks. And so I definitely wasn't that anymore. When I finally left, it was the first time any of them had heard about it. And what was so interesting was that they were really sad that they couldn't be there for me through that, like that I was going through that by myself. Um, and that was actually really beautiful because I was in so embarrassed and ashamed that I was more thinking with that, like, oh gosh, what are they they're gonna think I'm a failure. I mean, we barely made it a year. This is this is crazy. They're gonna think that I'm crazy or that I stayed, knowing that he had um, betrayed my boundaries and betrayed my trust. What would they think about that? Because I'd always said I would never do that. We all we would uh -huh. never do it. Uh -huh. You know, all of these things. I'm supposed to be the strong woman. You know, all of these things, and they were just so so supportive and comforting. And they made me feel not stupid. They made me feel not shameful. Um, and I don't know what I would have done if I didn't have some place to go. When I left, I went straight to my parents' house. They had no idea where I was coming. When I pulled out suitcases, they were like, all right, so something's going down. <laughs> uh -huh. you, you know, what, what are we doing here? And I ended up, I didn't even tell them like right away. They gave me a couple of days, you know, to, to, to kind of start to open up. And um, they would... They gave me the best, which was not pushing me to talk about it all. They were like, all right, well, let's go for a walk. Let's get physical. Let's um, let's do the things you like to do. Let's go cook something together. Just really making sure that I remember that I had life before this yes. and who I was before this. And it was everything that I needed and didn't know that I needed. And um, their support was really what got me through. Oh, you know, obviously God. Right. I really leaned into God, to God the most because our relationship uh, just blossomed in a way that I didn't know was possible during this process. So I really went to God about most of it, but it was amazing to be able to be around people who loved me, loved me like I was, didn't want me to change and were so supportive and, and I just needed it. It was, it was really a blessing. So I stayed with my parents for months mm -hmm. um, before kind of moving back out and, and getting back on my feet. And it was, it was wonderful. So the divorce process now, when is it that you're the one that filed for divorce? Yes. So um, interestingly enough, and I don't know if you've had the chance to watch, I know that there's there's like three videos in the series that I did um, called Life After, Life After Divorce. After divorce. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the first one just talks about the divorce story when I finally realized it was time to go, kind of the journey to getting married on all of that great stuff. And the second one talks about how deeply... Um, dark the healing process was, but necessary. Um, and then in that third one, it talks reinventing about- Reinventing yourself. Yeah, reinventing yeah. yourself, yes. And then in that third one, it talks about, um, you know, what what I ended up finding out on the other side of all of this. So we go to, to start this process. I reached out to my lawyer. We're getting things rolling. I, we do the petition. We do the uh, the discovery. All of this stuff. You know, you have to turn in all of these things. You have to basically turn in your life um, to let them know, like uh -huh. what you have, what you don't have, because you're probably going to have to divide up those assets and all of those different things. We were thinking it was going to be pretty easy because, again, we didn't go forward with, or at least I didn't think we had <laughs> going forward <laughs> with um, buying any land or all of those things that we were planning to do. Um, so I thought it was going to be pretty easy. As we're going through this divorce process and we're talking to the judge, um, my ex ended up finding proof that our marriage was not legal. What? Threw us all off. Everybody's like, but you have a marriage license. It's signed. There's a stamp. What are you talking about? In the state that we got married in, which was South Carolina, you have to have a, you have to have two copies signed, stamped, and you have to leave one with the um the court of court of, of clerks uh -huh. they could not find that copy 
So as we're trying to figure out what's going on, remember, we were this was during COVID. We didn't know if something happened with um, the mail system. Things were going crazy with the mail system. We couldn't figure out if like, did it just fall out? You know, where, where did it go in the envelope? We signed it. We had the ceremony. We did all that. We even had another ceremony a few months after that, like a bigger ceremony with our friends. Um, well, not big, but more for yeah, more friends. For, actually, mm-hmm. um, and so it, it really threw us off. We were like, okay, well, I've changed my name. <laughs> uh-huh. I've done all of those things that make you legally married. And so in a loophole, the judge made a, um, he, he made a judgment that while our marriage was valid in the eyes that we did all the steps because it was, I'm sorry, legal in, in that we did all the steps, it was going to be deemed invalid. Meaning mm. while we tried to get married twice and we tried to go through the process. I've changed my name. I've done all of these different things. We've joined bank accounts. We've done all of those steps that you do. We've had the, all of the things mm-hmm. um, because there's not a, there's not that additional paperwork that they can find. It is invalid. So we end up now we're already thousands of dollars into both of our lawyers. Mercy. Um, so we ended up that was it. Like that's the judgment. That's that was it was case closed out of nowhere. At this point, it had been months of back and forth, months of can you please give me my money back or can you give me this back or whatever, you know, all of those different things that you go through as a as a um person separating from someone else. All of that and we find out that our marriage was deemed invalid. It sent me through it sent me through the kind of like the breakup process all over again. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It was, it felt like not only was my marriage invalid, but so was the experience. Yes. You no, know, you, you go through something like that and you take your vows so seriously. I don't play about God. You know, I don't nope. play about any of that. You know, and I'm a flawed person. I'm a human being. So right, right, right. I'm not perfect, but I was really trying so hard to get that right. And so you go through all of that. You go through being embarrassed by actions. You go through being upset with yourself or how you're dealing with things. You're trying to work on yourself. You're reading the books. You're you're doing all of the stuff that you think that you have to do. You're in marriage counseling by yourself. And you're and you're told by a judge uh, that two you're or three days it. into the court hearings, these virtual court hearings, and he looked sad for me. I was like, and I appreciate that, but this is not quite enough. And he's like, I'm so sorry. I see your pictures. I even see the license that you have, but you have to have this other paper on file. That is the law. And that was that. We stopped everything. Um, I wrote that last check <laughs> to, to my attorney, who was actually amazing. Um, and that was the end of the process. So We didn't have to go through the, because it would have been like, I think two more hearings after that before we made our decisions. Because again, we didn't have many shared assets because it was such a new marriage. Right. Um, So we were like, you know, almost all the way through, we were halfway through it. And then it was like, no, it's invalid. So we stop here. Wow. And so going back through that was so jarring Mm -hmm. and felt like such a, like I said, such a heart, like heart wrenching thing. But it was to me where I saw the glory of God in that moment. Yes. Because how deeply does God have to love you to not even let you go through the rest of that? Yes. One of the biggest reasons, not even one of the biggest reason that was so hard for me to meet for me to leave was not love, was not that I just really wanted to be married. It was that I was really afraid that I was going to let God down mm-hmm. by having a divorce. And, you know, you're raised, I was raised in the church. I was raised um, to be still a free thinker and open-minded. And my mom was like, girl, stop. That is not a thing. He's not going to show me the Bible verses. She was like, set yourself free. Mm-hmm. It, it was so indoctrinated in my mind that I really struggled with it. I was just like, God, are you sure? Are you like... I'm really sorry. You know, I felt such, such deep, deep despair about thinking that I had let him down. But when that happened, I, I felt free once mm-hmm. I really took a step back. So I'm going through that. I'm like, how can they say it's invalid? How can they say it's invalid? Like, you know, God, I prayed about this and 
I was so afraid to lose these things. And because you, you know, being in ballot means I also lost certain rights to certain things that were actually mine. Uh huh. And so there were all these different things that that really meant, but God was talking to me and telling me like, I will restore you just not the way you think. Uh -huh. Trust me. That's all I want you to do. You're, you are not invalid. Your experience was not invalid. And that was when he told me to share this when I was ready. And so I was like, share this with who? This is embarrassing. This is not a cute story. No <laughs> one wants to hear. Oh, Shannon got married <laughs> after trying to wait for the right person and all of these things happened within that marriage. And then the judge said it was invalid because they couldn't find the second piece of paper that you guys signed. But it all worked out in the end because God loved me so much. He was like, you can't even go for it. I think that was a blessing though. At all. Exactly. You were I not think it's catch. a blessing. And to be yeah. honest, I pray for that to happen to my arm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I prayed. I prayed. That that would be the case for mine, and it wasn't so. No, <laughs> I think that was it a did. blessing for you. It, it did end up being that. It did end up being that. And there were some, like like again, we there were some things that I realized I wasn't going to have rights to anymore that really are rightfully mine. But if you think about it in the grand scheme, so what? I got to walk away. Okay, and that is the most important thing, you know. Um, yeah. It's not. Sometimes we look at, you know, what should be ours. And it's funny because I said it to my husband this morning. You know, sometimes I was saying, oh, well, this should be mine. And I mean, I heard, I heard like God said, just leave. Why are yeah. you holding on? Sometimes we yes. hold on to things and we want mm -hmm. this and we want that because it should be ours. No, what should be ours is the experience. We have now gained it. What should be ours is the freedom. He has now given that to us. What should be yes. ours yep. is taking what we have learned and moving forward. Exactly. And that's something that can't be taken back from you. Yes. Mm -hmm. earthly things don't really matter yep. the experience does so sometimes God has to teach us that you know yeah yes. in different in different ways so after divorce life after divorce how has that been for you you know it's been so interesting and mostly good um I when when I left my parents house it was like I went into this other place, right? Because you went from living with someone then you went from living with your parents and now you're back on your own again. And so what I was realizing was some of those old things were coming up, some of those old worries, but because I had new wisdom, I was able to attack it differently. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think I mentioned a little earlier on that I this has been the time that I've been addressing not only the trauma of that, but the trauma that led me to that particular relationship. Mm -hmm. so I've been doing a lot of the work on that. So that's why I say mostly good, because some of that is difficult too. Um, but I just feel like such, such love for life as it is now. Mm -hmm. When before I was so, I was enjoying myself, but I was so focused on what I wanted to come, wanted that marriage, wanted the kids, wanted all of that. And I still do but I'm really invested in enjoying my life right now. Like if nothing were to change, if nothing else were to come, this should be everything you want it to be. Yes. And so I've been really building that and been very intentional about that and really grateful for that. I've seen a shift in how I navigate everything, even friendships, um, a shift in those things. I started dipping my toe into dating even that um, has been a really, really different experience, mm -hmm. and how we how 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 I share what I share. Yep, um, mm -hmm. that's been really, really different. I'm much more guarded, and I think that that's a great thing because, you know, I needed that balance, and I needed that I needed kind of that awareness, that assert that discernment to really kick in, so that I was making better choices. And so, life after has been so joyful is the best word to describe it because, you know, in joy, there are sometimes, you know, moments that you're, you're kind of pushing through, like the holidays were like, ah, oh, man, I thought things, I'd be in a different place right now, but I was like, but look where I'm not. Uh -huh. so, uh -huh. Amen to that. And amen so it's just that. been, it's just been a beautiful ride. I don't, I would not change it for anything. It definitely wouldn't be the way I would have written it, but I also don't think I would have gotten to this side of glory either. I had no idea the things that God had for me on the other side. So I'm so grateful. Nice. And I know sometimes after divorce and people start living on their own, they can go through stages of grief mm -hmm. while they're by themselves. Yeah. How does that, 
how, how did that play a part or if it, if it did if it didn't it what did. transpired in grief it did um i think that because you have to be really thoughtful about the fact that even if someone makes choices that you don't agree with in a marriage there's something that you need to address within yourself about mm -hmm. who you chose and what those red flags were, maybe why you ignored them, mm -hmm. you know? And so that definitely took me to a place where I had to, to surrender to a little bit of suffering. And when I say the suffering, um, I say that lightly because I do think again, like it could have been so much worse, which doesn't negate the experience, but I, I just grateful that this was the level of it. Um, but it definitely took me to a place of like, oh my goodness, what if this isn't in the cards for me? Or um, what was it that I was so concerned about that I allowed this to choose me and I chose this, you know, uh -huh. those different things. And so that does take you through that grief process. There was some mourning that I still needed to do. Um, and I realized that how important it was to grieve not only the relationship, but who I used to be, because that girl just, just does not exist anymore. Um, and I loved her, but I loved this person more. But that doesn't mean that I, I don't miss how I used to have a little bit more innocence. And I used to yeah. have a little bit more openness. And I that it just doesn't exist now. It's a good thing, but it doesn't mean it doesn't make me sad sometimes. But going through or what well, didn't, it doesn't make me sad now. But as I was first living on my own again, I definitely went through that sense of like that loss mm -hmm. um, of that. Like, OK, now what? you know, what, what's next to come. But I, I feel like acceptance isn't even the word I accept that that happened, but I'm so excited about where I am now and what I'm, I feel limitless now. There's, there's so much more that I think that's available to me, but I didn't have that thought about myself before this marriage. Yeah. Once, you know, once, once it is that we have gone through divorces, sometimes our lives never, it never, goes back to what it was before there's right. so much change exactly yeah there's there's so much change to it um do you believe it has made you better or bitter i know you have answered it but <laughs> for some person sometimes they because of the experience no even as i say you start dipping your toes back in dating some people can't even date because they're so bitter about what happened yeah um so I won't act like dating hasn't been scary. <laughs> um, I will not act like that at all. It is the wild west out here, but um, I don't think that there's bitterness here. I do believe that when the judge said invalid, that they, they're definitely, that was my first moment of feeling some bitter feelings, but God dealt with me during that. Since then, I've just been continuously wanting to get better. And, and in an honest way, you know, I don't want to focus so much on becoming a better person that I don't experience the grief. Because if I don't, then it won't last. It won't be authentic, these changes that I'm making for myself. But I just truly believe that this has been the biggest blessing of my life because I needed to be different. I needed to see different. I need to experience God and the people around me more differently so that I was able to step into this next season. Awesome. Awesome. What what have you learned about marriage? Ooh. Um, <laughs> that's a great question. You know, when it comes to marriage, what I know for sure is that love is just like <laughs> not number one, not number two. That nope. is not what makes a marriage work. Nope. Um, great you know, you, you, sh you should have it for sure. But compatibility and really understanding what that looks like for you is important. Really understanding what partnership looks like, really paying attention to the relationships they already have, even the ones that weren't romantic, but how are they dealing with friends? What is their communication like? What were the dynamics within their families? How do you guys ne negotiate? How do they respect your boundaries? What kind of person is this? Mm -hmm. is so much more important than how you feel about them because sometimes our feelings can trick us. Mm -hmm. put blinders on us, they do all of these different things, but what kind of person do you actually have? I think marriage is a place where you're not going to be who you were on your wedding day 
you know, you know, five years, 10 years, 15 nope. years down the road, you, you have to have opportunities for change. But I think there's something at the core that should continue to keep you. If that's your shared faith, if that's your friendship, those things need to exist in order for there to be a, found, a foundation that will last. This passion is cute. Um, you know, this, these love bombs and that romance is great, but what's really romantic is knowing that when your partner says they're going to do something, they actually do it. Yes. Or being able to trust what they're saying out of their mouth is, is so much more important than the flowers. Yes. And so really, really understanding how important and how, how much deeper it is to look for an actual partner, not just somebody you love is really important. And that, again, that's not to negate love. That's not to throw away love, but that's what do you actually love? Hmm. You know, is it is it how they communicate or is it not? Is it that you share these beliefs? You need to have more in common I'm yes. than you do different. Yes. If you're living life, it's one thing to be on a team at work and you guys have differences and you're, you're building something together. That's a great dynamic. But as for a home and harmony and peace, yeah, y'all need to have more in common than you do. Today. Yeah, I love it. I mean, I have always said, I don't think love is enough. No, no. Because, <laughs> yo, know, I can love you, but then we are going back and forth every day. That's exactly. Not helpful. Some people, we can love each other, but we can be apart. Yes, yeah. And uh, I've also realized that sometimes we get married to people because they are doing something for us in this particular season. Ooh, so yeah. it's like, we need a friend and mm -hmm. they're the friend right now. So we get yeah. married to them. No. there. So when it is now that you no longer need a friend for that particular situation, the marriage fades because what you need them for is over. Exactly. That's such so, a joke. That's good. So it, That's it, good. it has to be deeper. It has to be it deeper. Does. And, um, even helping. Sometimes we help people. And because, yes. you know, this is the person that helped me when I was not well, or this is the person that helped me go through this this trauma. This is the person that I'm to marry. No, it's not. This is the person that was supposed to just help you for that situation. Exactly. Don't get married. Don't get married to persons because they help you. Exactly. Get married to persons for deeper reasons. Exactly. And loneliness. You want somebody around. Oh, yes. I feel like loneliness is one that people really, really brush under the rug loneliness can be powerful when yes. you've been there too long yes and yes. you really you end up choosing someone just because they chose you yes That's yes nice. yes and even even also just just being with someone because you don't you think that they're gonna love you you don't love yourself enough and they yep. show you some sort of mm -hmm. love so you're with them so i've always said to even clients i've dealt with you you don't expect this person to show you all the love and the happiness. You bring something to the exactly. table and let them also bring it. Exactly. So when it is that they're sad, you don't become sad because just, exactly. they're just sad. Exactly. They shouldn't be able to change no. your feelings, your whole world, because for your five minute conversation, they felt some type of way. <laughs> you should be able to still <laughs> go on. And, and, and I mean, it, it, this is reality because it, it does is. happen this way many times. And that is why we have so many broken marriages. Exactly. So many broken exactly. marriages and relationships because we're going on, we're going into this in the wrong terms. Exactly. You can't be with someone to complete you. You gotta come in whole. You, you gotta come in whole. You're a whole person. I don't mm -hmm. I don't go by that notion that say this person completes me. No, you don't. No, no, no. you don't. You don't complete me. And I don't me. want to complete you. I have no, no I don't want that to that. that is not my role. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh, listen, listen, on this side of life, after, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry to say that, but on uh, this That's side funny. of life, ain't nobody coming with no foolishness. What? No, no, <laughs> no, don't even, don't, don't, even, and that's, I think that's one of the biggest, and I love it, it shows up everywhere. I've seen differences in myself, even at work. The email didn't start right. All right, well, I'm gonna let you try me again. Because <laughs> this is not, you're not setting the tone like this. I'm having a great day. You're, you might not be, 
These are how we're, this is how we're moving now. And so whatever you need, you need to get it for yourself. <laughs> I'm not I'm not gonna be your counselor. I can't help that. I'm not gonna help you with that anymore. So you're gonna have to work on that yourself and then you, come back. You gotta come back to me when it's actually my job. Because right here, this isn't this is not I did not sign up. This is not my goal. I was not assigned, not appointed. No. <laughs> You, you gotta come back, circle back. I am not the trash can for whatever you're trying to throw out today. <laughs> it, it changes dynamics and friendships. Like, uh, uh-uh, I don't need this friendship anymore. Oh yes, yes. <laughs> Look at it twice again. You know, you know what? <laughs> Why are we friends? I remember. <laughs> we don't need to do that. I can't be over here. I'm wasting my time. Listen. <laughs> I wish you well, and I will send you off with love. I do not. Everything, everything changes. You know, someone, um, it's so funny. Someone brought up on that video, um, you know, I mentioned if it costs you your piece, it's too expensive. And they were mm-hmm. kind of negating that. And I was like, you know what? Sometimes I think that people get peace and comfort confused. Yes. So yes. sure. Sometimes in order to get peace, like you left a marriage, I was in complete peace, but I also was in pain. I also was uncomfortable. I wasn't in my home anymore. I left my home. You know, I went into a different city. I went to my parents' house, left all of those creature comforts. I had set things up for myself. And then I'm the one who had to start life over. That is not comfort. (laughs) That is not ease, but it is peace. And so if you're around someone who's friend, coworker, any of that, who's not bringing you peace, if you can't address it, if y'all can't fix that, then nope. you've got to go. It's not, it's genuinely not worth it. Life is too laborious for us to be sitting in spaces like that. So anything that doesn't, that doesn't add to my peace, I don't mind working hard. I don't mind working through things that are worth it. But if you disturb my peace, I am out. Out. Yeah. We're out. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's funny. That's funny. Um, <laughs> So we have come to the end, Shannon. This was good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you made me laugh. I laughed till I cried, Shannon. Good, <laughs> I laughed till I cried. <laughs> I love this. Such a good chat. Oh my goodness! Thank you so much, and thank you so much for being vulnerable. Absolutely, absolutely. And, thank and you for having me. Yes, and I believe experience really teaches wisdom. Yes. I prefer these kind of conversations because these are conversations that people can learn from. Mm-hmm. They're not things that are, you know, facade. Get them facade it and hide it, and you know, you make mm-hmm. things look pretty. It's not pretty. It's but not. We can come out good after all. Yeah, it, it can. The ending can be beautiful, but it probably won't be what you expected. And so, just hold on, because all of it is not going to be beautiful. But I do believe it's worth it. Wisdom on that other side can help so many other people, and can get you to the place that you've always wanted to be. Yep, and it can make you a better person. And better person, for sure. For sure. So tell us how we can find you. Yes, so um, got a lot of great things going on, but I have HeyShannonRay.com, which will point you in the direction of my YouTube channel, my blog. I have some other big projects coming out that are going to be pretty good that we're nice. just, you know, just trying to commu- create community with other folks who have had some experiences like this or have some other type of hardships to go through and just want to save space to to have those conversations. So um, HeyShannonRay.com or the YouTube channel, um, HeyShannonRay, you can find me there. Nice, nice. Thank you so much again for being on the podcast. And thank you, thank you. to my listeners for constantly listening to The Unfiltered by Jade. And we'll be back next week, Tuesday. Thank you. Oh, 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 oh.